Hey kids, how are you doing today? I hope you're being obedient to your mom and dad, and I hope you're trusting in the Lord. I'd like to read you another story. Again, this story is from the Bible, the scripture, the word of God, and it's a true story. Now, we're just reading a little children's book, but the Bible actually tells us what really happened in the Old Testament regarding the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel were in Egypt where they were in slavery and God was going to raise up someone to help them to be delivered from the slavery that they were in. Did you know that God always rescues his people? So this story is the story of little baby, what's his name? Yes, Moses, and how God used him, saved him, and made him the leader of Israel. This is called The Princess and the Baby. The Princess and the Baby, written by Janice Kramer. The wicked king of Egypt was as worried as he could be. Israelites, he fumed and he fussed. That's all I ever see, Israelites. They work our land, they breathe our air. Those Israelites are everywhere. Ah, if I were not careful, some fine day they'll end up taking our land away, he said. This is the king of Egypt. This is some his soldiers. These are the Israelites who are working the land. This is the Nile River in the land of Egypt. Many, many years ago, almost 3,000 years ago. I'll make them suffer, then they'll leave, and Egypt will be mine. Those Israelites will know this king is not without a spine, he said. He made them carry stones and sticks and great big heavy loads of bricks. Worst of all, he planned to kill the baby boys of Israel. This shows the children of Israel building the pyramids and the other slaves of Egypt. And this shows the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, with his pet leopards. Oh, what a wicked man he was to think such a thing. But many of the Israelites were smarter than the king. They hid their baby boys from sight and kept them hidden day and night. They prayed and prayed that God above would help them with his strength and love. They didn't want their baby boys to be killed, of course, so they protected them by hiding them after they were born. Can you imagine how frightening it would be to have a little baby brother and know that the king wanted to capture him and kill him? One mother tried to keep her baby quiet as a mouse, but every day the soldiers of the king rode by her house. If he should cry as they pass by, they'll know he's here and he will die. My baby must be kept alive. Somehow, some way, he must survive. So here's this poor mother with her little baby wanting to protect him. And so that loving mother made a tiny boat. With loving care, she made it strong so it was sure to float. She dressed her baby in his clothes, then kissed him on his little nose, and tucked him in with blankets round to keep him warm and safe and sound. There's the little baby, and she's making a little boat out of bulrushes or rushes from the river. And here she is saying goodbye. It's so sad. Here's his big sister, Miriam, and she's sad to see him go as well. The baby sister, Miriam, was puzzled through and through. Why, mother, cried the little girl, what are you going to do? You'll see, the mother said, you'll see. Be quiet now and follow me. Then out the door with cautious eye, she looked for soldiers passing by. The way was clear. She gathered up her baby, boat, and all. Stay right beside me, Miriam. Be careful not to fall. They walked together one long mile until they reached the River Nile. And then the little girl began to understand her mother's plan. And when they reached the river's edge, they put the strong boat in then laid the baby down inside. No water touched his skin. He didn't cry or make a peep. He simply yawned and went to sleep. The mother wiped a tear away. 
the king will never find him here. So they floated the little baby out in the Nile in his little ark, his little boat of bulrushes. And here's Miriam watching him while the boats go by on the river. Then suddenly she heard a sound. Upon the river path, three ladies, whispered Miriam, they've come to take a bath. Oh no, the one that's chattering, she is the daughter of the king. He murmurs little baby boys, I mustn't make a single noise. I said murmurs, but it's the word murders. The ki- this is the king's daughter, and she's going she's gonna to kill my little baby brother if she finds him, Miriam says. What is she going to do? She ducked and hid, but all was lost. They'd seen the little boat. Why, look, the princess cried aloud. She picked him up, and now, and how he cried. An Israelite, the princess sighed, but he's so sweet, as sweet can be. I'll take him home to live with me. This shows the princess, and she's picked up the little baby out of the bulrushes, and Miriam is watching. She's probably frightened, her little heart is pounding. She's wondering what's going to happen to her little brother. Maybe she's forgotten that God is looking out for him. The ladies hadn't noticed that young Miriam was there, so she approached them now as if she didn't have a care. Hello, she said, I'm almost nine. And don't you think the weather's fine? What have you there? Why, goodness me, it's, is that a little baby boy I see, she said. Why, yes, it is, the princess said. I found him floating over there. Well, you'll need a nurse, said Miriam, to give him proper care. I know a lady Israelite who'd nurse him for you day and night. The princess answered thankfully, Please go and bring her here to me. That was very wise of Miriam, wasn't it? Because now she can get her own mother to come and take care of baby Moses. When Miriam came back, she said, with her mother by the hand. Then bowing down, the mother said, I'll do what you command. The princess looked at her and smiled. I'll pay you well to nurse this child. Take care of him until he's grown and love him as your very own. And then look, here's the princess giving Moses back to Moses' mother. You may be wondering why they wear these little hats. Sometimes in Israel, in Egypt, uh, the wealthy people would would take little bits of perfume and they would they they would put perfume in oil and they would congeal the oil maybe take a little bit of animal fat and then put it in a little hat and then in the heat as as the oil would melt it would flow down over their face and and they would be perfumed it sounds kind of strange to us but that's what that's what the egyptians like to do The mother's eyes were filled with tears. Her heart was filled with joy. She praised the Lord for giving back her little baby boy. And Miriam was happy too. For deep within her heart, she knew there must have been some reason God hadn't let her brother die. This shows Miriam and her mother and baby, baby Moses. They called him Moses because that means drawn out of the water. And here's the princess, and she's going back to her palaces in Egypt. And we know why God spared Moses, don't we? Because when Moses grew up, he was going to be the man who would help to set the Israelites free. God has a plan, doesn't he? And he's working that plan, and we can always trust in him. I hope you're having a good day. This is Pastor Paul, out for now.